CX-52, but anyways, acceleration. Woo! Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's gonna to be going over the all new 2023 Mazda CX-9 Grand Touring. Before we get in this video though, a huge shout out and thank you to the Tim Daly Mazda here in South Town, Utah for giving me some time with this CX-9. I'm gonna include a link to their inventory in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. If you have any questions or need any help, just ask for Jake. And then I do wanna mention, if you guys wanna see more videos on the CX-9, then let me know what other packages you guys want me to review for the 2023 model year, because as of right now, I only plan on reviewing the Grand Touring. And and then as always, on a side note, if you can save time and money the next time I purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a turbocharged 2.5 liter four cylinder that goes through a six speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 20 around town and then 26 on the highway with power outputs being 227 horsepower and then 310 pound feet of torque. Before we go over the front end, I do want to mention if you can see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Starting here with the hood, you guys can see with the design, it's just like flat in the center and then it kind of like dips off on either side. I do like the sharp lines on top of that. And then coming down below, you guys can see here with the grill, you've got the Mazda logo there in the center. There's actually a camera below that Mazda logo. I love the horizontal slats. And then you can see with the daytime running lights and the LED headlamps. And then we do have parking sensors here on the front end as well. Putting it all together, I think that the CX-9 is a very handsome vehicle. Coming around the side here, our time wheel setup is 255, 50, 20 in the front and over in the rear as well. And then you guys can see with the coloration, it's this cool metallic gray and I think it looks good. We've got these pretty prominent fender flares here. Notice that continues all along the side with the material use and then you've got the chrome trim on top of that. Taking a look at the side profile here, you guys can see with the door handles right there, those are body painted and the mirror cap is as well. And now that I'm looking at this, this kind of looks like the new Honda CRV from a side view, or rather the new Honda CRV kind of looks like the CX-9. So here is our key fob. You guys can see we've got our unlock function, our lock function, and then the opening here for the hatch. So just hold that and it'll pop it right open. Now I've got the third row folded down so you guys can see what the storage space is like with the third row folded down. Notice this little mat here says CX-9 on it. And then we have this little lever we can pick up for some more storage space underneath. And there's a little charging port off to the side. Now I've got one of the seats up in the third row so you guys can see what the storage space is like. So it goes from here to there. You're all done with the back, just press this button right here and it'll lower the hatch right back down. Now here are the taillights with the CX-9, definitely a cool look and then notice the chrome trim kind of connects them and then all of our regular badges and logos here on the back and then down at the bottom, parking sensors and then look how sporty those exhaust tips look. That pretty much caps things off for the exterior styling on this CX-9 and sorry about the crunching with the leaves, but anyways, let me know what you guys think about the overall styling with this. I think it's actually aged very well. Now taking a look at the door panel here, first off we've got the sunshade here for the rear passengers and look at all the padding down below and then that contrasted stitching right there. And then normal window control right here and then look at the handle, pretty neat. So here are these seats, you guys can see really cool stitching there and then notice perforated in the center for the leather and then you do have that whole adjustment on the side. Legroom here in the back is actually really solid and then we've got a storage pocket right here and well, we got lots of sunlight, but heated seats for the rear passengers. We've got our own climate zone, and then we've got some cup holders down below that. And then headroom's also really good. Uh, yeah, so I um, kind of fit here in the third row. <laughs> got a uh, USB port back here, and then some cup holders. But at least headroom is, well, kind of decent. I'm touching the top. Notice the keyless entry. So here's the front door panel, really nice padding and notice the contrasted stitching. And then we do have blind spot mirroring for the mirrors. All of our window controls right here. And then you guys can see with the mirror adjustment, the mirrors do power fold in. And there's actually paint protection film on the piano black trim so you don't scratch it. That's smart. Taking a look at the front seat here, really nice stitching. And then notice perforated all down the center portion. And then we do have our power adjustments here on the side and then the memory seat function. We have our gas cap release and then the hood release right there. And then we got some controls here. So like that's for your camera, lane departure. It's actually your like hill climb assist, parking sensors, and then that's to open up the hatch. And then the steering wheel is, well, manually adjustable. So really nice leather wrap steering wheel here. You can see the darker stitching there in the center portion. We do have adaptive cruise control. We've got the little info button for the center. And then you guys can see with the volume controls, voice command controls, you know, the normal stuff. Turn signal light stock, windshield wiper stock. Now we have this cool gauge cluster here. First off, if I press the info button, notice, well, it'll show me 
different bits of info on the car. Who would have thought? But on top of that, when I put it into sport mode, it shows a little sport icon there. Pretty cool. Now in reverse, you guys can see we've got a backup camera with trajectory lines that turn with the steering wheel. And we also have that bird's eye view as well because this has a full 360 camera system. And if I actually put it into park and then press that camera view button, notice it pops on with the front camera right there. So yeah, really good camera system, easy to use overall, and I'm a fan. As for the rest of the infotainment system, first off, uh, response time is pretty good with the dial. This is not a touch screen. Um, so you can see I can press this and nothing happens. It's all controlled via dial. Um, but once you figure out the whole system, it's actually pretty dang intuitive. So it's like all soft touch on the dash, as you can see, and then I really like this trim that goes across. We've got analog controls for the climate system, dual zone here for the front, heated and cold seats, and then heated steering wheel as well. And then down below those climbing controls, we actually have a wireless phone charging pad. We have a shifter for the six-speed automatic transmission. There is your drive mode select, and there is a manual mode right there where you can use the shifter, or you can use these paddles here on the back of the steering wheel. This is our analog control center here for the infotainment system, or rather the only control center because that's all you've got. Parking brake right there, you've got your auto hold, and then we've got some cup holders right here with our center console that opens up both ways. Pretty funky, got some USBs there. Uh, nice leather trim here on the top. Now here's our glove box, as you can see, lined with felt and decent amount of storage space. Random, but I love how that goes into the vent. It looks good. Up top here you can see we've got our control for the sunroof, and well, there's the sunroof. So here's our window sticker for this CX-9. Again, this is a grand touring, and pretty much everything standard equipment. That's one of the cool things about Mazda. There are some options, and that is in this section right here. Um, but base MSRP is 45690 Total MSRP after all options on this one, $47,520. And let's see how it drives. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility of the hood, and you guys can hopefully see the head-up display now. Both the mirrors do a blind spot monitoring. Let's put the rest of the rear. And I forgot to mention, there's actually padding here on the side where your knee might hit, which is actually very nice. But anyways, let's set off. So, setting off here in the CX-9. And first off, let's talk about seat comfort while I'm getting a feel for the ride quality. It's really good. Um, these leather seats are very nice. Don't worry, that's just my tripod. <laughs> um, but yeah, these leather seats are really nice. They're, they're comfortable. Um, I feel like I fit pretty well in them. If you guys are wondering, I'm a little bit chonkier than I used to be. I'm, I'm like 200 pounds now. I've been hitting the gym, okay? I promise, I've been hitting the gym. It's, it's all muscle, it's, it's not. Um, but anyways, I, I fit in these seats uh, pretty well. I love the feeling of the steering wheel. It feels very uh, premium to hold, so that is another a big benefit here with the CX-9. Let's see kind of how this gets up just a little bit. That turbo engine is really responsive. There's lots of low-end torque. That feels great. And this is obviously the heaviest vehicle that this engine is in with in Mazda's lineup because they also put this in, well, they put it in the three, they put it in the CX-30, the CX-5, so on and so forth, CX-52. But anyways, acceleration. Woo! Now this engine is all about torque and you can tell because Mazda programs the automatic transmission to short shift with this. Um, so like if you actually pay attention to where the tachometer goes, uh, Redline is like 60, yeah, it looks like 6,500 RPMs roughly. This shifts at like 5,000 RPMs. So like 1,500 RPMs before Redline, but that's so that it can stay in peak torque because again, this engine is all about torque. Um, so yeah, let's kind of sum things up here at the Grand Touring. Uh, and I also forgot to talk about the suspension. It's actually really comfortable with the ride. Uh, but it still has the normal Mazda sportiness. Like, this still handles really well. It still kind of uh, just, you know, drives sporty overall. So I think that this looks um, pretty good on the outside. I do prefer the new styling on, like, the CX-5 and the CX-50, but I'm sure this will get an update in the near future. And then when it comes to the interior, I mean, this is where Mazda really shines because this is ultimately, you know, a quote-unquote economy car but it has interior materials that are far nicer and feel far more upscale than what you see in most economy cars. I mean, just get into like a Honda or a Toyota and the interiors feel so much cheaper compared to this. Like I feel like I'm in a luxury car, but it's not. 
Um, so that's a big benefit, and it drives really well. It has a great powertrain. Uh, I think the Mazda is, frankly, super underrated because, again, so many people will go for, like, a Toyota Highlander or, you know, a Honda Pilot. But, like, this, on the other hand, like, it's got quite a bit of power. It's fun to drive. It's got a really nice interior. Um, the new uh, Highlander, I guess, kind of competes with this a little bit more now because it has a 2.4-liter turbocharged engine. Um, but, like, the, you know... Honda Pilot, that still uses a naturally aspirated V6, which don't get me wrong, V6s are cool, but these turbo engines, especially when we're uh, in mountain land, definitely do a lot better. Let me know what you guys think about the new Grand Touring, and like I said earlier in the video, if you guys want me to review more Grand Touring packages, let me know in the comment section below, because if you don't let me know, then this is it that I'm going to review for the 23 model year. That's because something's up with our video on this CX-9. Again, a huge shout out and thank you to the Tim Daly Mazda here in South Utah for giving me some time with the CX-9. Check out the intro in the description down below. I'll see you.